starting first with you, Ari. Uh, we knew that they were trying to meddle. We know that they did meddle. I would say this was perhaps the most forceful uh, example thus far of the White House saying, OK, we're on it. We're on it and we're trying to stop it. But it's not clear, at least from what I heard entirely, Ari, that we can. Two points. Number one, from a pure communications point of view, this was so good to say and so wise. You know, when the knock on Capitol Hill is we're not doing enough and then you have all those leaders stand up there to explain what they've been doing, it's the most effective rebuttal you can think of. Mm -hmm. Two, as effective as they, we have the tools and techniques, it's good to see the government working together to do it. We're an open society, and I don't know how you ever 100% stop it. So, somebody had a quote this morning. It was brilliant. I, I don't recall their name, but they said, what's happening here is that we are a free society with freedom of speech. Russia practices information wars, information wars against free speech. That's what's at stake. And if we're... Yeah. Well, in free speech, we can't stop all information wars. Wow. I, you know, um, let me go to Jed Babin for a moment, because uh, on the phone right now, I've said over and over again that Putin uh, very much wants to divide a wedge in this country, because if you weaken America because it's divided politically speaking, then you make it harder for uh, America to, to unite and, and basically make life more difficult for Russia. So this is strategic, perhaps, on his end. Um, has it happened before? Well, it's been done, I think, in every election since the Russian Revolution. I mean, look, this is what the Russians do. They try to stick it to us every chance they get. And that goes back to, oh, I don't know, Peter the Great, which was in the 18th century and long before America even existed. But this is what Russians do. The fact of the matter is what we have to concentrate on is two things. Number one, we have to concentrate on the states, because the states are the people, of course, who set the terms of an election, and they set the way people vote, and they can protect or not how people vote, and the real voting counts. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we have to protect, and I think that's going to be a limited thing on the federal basis. The states have to pick up the real cudgel here and start engaging in, well, however they can, engaging in the cyber protection for their own vote counts. The second point really comes down to what we have here is an enemy, and it's not just one, it's not just Russia. We have to protect against Iran and China and a lot of other nations, including North Korea, by the way, that have the capability of cyber war against us. And one of the things we have to do, and I don't believe we've done it yet, Cyber Command does not really have an offensive doctrine. They have to have an, a real oh. offensive doctrine so they can go ahead and respond to these things and, frankly, take out the computer. Gosh, I, I'm the disappointed to hear to that. Use. I'm really disappointed to hear that because I would have thought mm -hmm. our intelligence community, uh, our military would have uh, actively been working on trying to influence things elsewhere, right? Well, and, I, and, I, in I, I, and fighting back on this. And you're telling me we don't have anything really ready, ready to go and fire it up to deal with this threat? No, we have a lot of things ready to go and fire it up. What I'm saying is we don't have a structure, an operational mm. doctrine in which to employ it. So mm. unless you can do that, you don't have the ability to go forward. I know Cyber Command and NSA are doing much more than they have been in the, you know, since, well, since the Obama years. But right now, we are still vulnerable at the state level. And the states have to cooperate with the federal government, not just the cyber community like Facebook and, and Twitter and so forth. We have to get the states involved. We have to get them okay. to make interesting. Because you don't, you, I mean, the, the, the risk here is you get people like hacking into the deep old voting sure. machines, et cetera. And that's the really scary thought. Um, in terms of influencing the conversation, Scott, let me go to you because they've been pretty successful in that way. Um, you know, trying to infiltrate certain groups and gin up controversy, thereby pitting one group against the other. How do mm -hmm. we, as a nation, as a society, uh, guard ourselves against that threat? Well, you certainly, uh, both of your guests have raised some very, really important points that Democrats and Republicans can agree upon. Uh, I think a lot of it falls to the uh, technology companies or the social media companies and governments working with them at, as, as what, what has occurred. But let me say this in regard to strengthening the state elections. Can the GOP I, blocked I, I additional know. You know, the, going the social to media the companies, I, I don't trust them to get this one right. You know, they're too interested in their darn bottom line. Them, they got a lousy the 32 answer. accounts that they found at Facebook. Can't they do better? Better than that? I mean, Scott, come on. They, they you really should. trust these companies no. to actually get it right? I think somebody no. needs to get in there and force Trish. them to get it right. Trish, 
I agree with you. I, I'm reporting. I'm not evaluating. I don't trust them either because of what's happened two years ago and over the course of time. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that the government, our federal government, and these social media companies, mm -hmm. and if it's the government putting some regulations on them, I completely agree with you. Okay. But I think the GOP has to add money to the state elections. They blocked that earlier this week with the Dems chanting USA, and our president oh, has to send a, a you know, more consistent a whole bunch message of other stuff in to there. Russia yeah. and others. Yeah, you know, you know, don't make this political. Been. Scott, there please don't been. make this political. This it, is actually an I'm issue that is real. bipartisan, this and we need to secure issue. our country. And no, but I'm you're getting into the politics of it. I'm on the same page with you. It's all politics. What are you talking about? You block funding to the state election systems. How can you say you're supporting and making the state election Ari, safer if you won't give them money to do Ari, it? Ari, you can, you can you, you know, we're backtracking, and there Otherwise, was a whole lot of rhetoric. other stuff that went into that decision. And, and I don't know, is that what was it, 32 million? Or the, the, I don't know exactly what the numbers were, but there the was GOP some concern the about states. whether or not those numbers were right. What I don't like, Ari, is that Putin is winning because our darn media and the divisiveness of both parties, because you got political hacks on the left <laughs> and on the right. Sorry, guys, but this is what it comes down to. I'm and a political Putin's hack successful now? in driving a wedge between Americans. And this is one where it, that, that, that's not okay. He is using the openness of our society, what is our greatest strength, against us. Ari. Trish, I'm not sure I would go as far as to say Putin is winning. I think, as was pointed out earlier, the Soviet Union tried to do this in our elections throughout the heyday of communism. Uh, they usually do this about the weaknesses of Ari, racial relations. We have relations an investigation into That's the president kind of because people don't believe never, he actually rightly never, won. But, Can I, Ari, let I, me just, I when don't. I say that he's winning, he certainly had some success. I mean, here we are. There's half the country that doesn't believe that Donald Trump should actually be president. He's made yeah, some and I headway. Think they would have believed that no matter, well, and I think they would have believed that no matter what <laughs> Russia did. Look, I'm just not willing yet to say that Putin is winning. I'm saying Putin is interfering, and an attack on one party is an attack on all parties. We as Americans all need to take that seriously because yeah. it's happened to, to the advantage of Democrats in the last election. It'll happen to the disadvantage of Democrats in the next election. The Russian goal is to disunify ourselves. I happen to have a lot more faith yeah. in the American people, though. I think you cannot divide us that much. We're divided about surface politics, and it's a very nasty division. But it's a temporary division, because that's the true history and the story I, of the Let me American go over to Jed for a moment again. So Russia has okay. always tried to mess with us. They don't understand our they, system. They, they've always they tried this. I get it. And I kind of thought that speech. we yeah. sort of always tried to do our part as well um, via back channels. But, Jed, have we been falling behind on that front? Well, we've been falling behind to the extent that this is one of those cases where Perception and reality are equal. Perception is not reality. Reality is that the states have to take more of the burden, and the federal government needs to help them do that in creating firewalls exactly. and other protections to uh, protect the vote. But the fact is that Putin is winning insofar as we're having even this debate. The debate comes down to whether Putin and others are going to be successful in dividing us and discrediting democracy. This democracy is not discredited by a couple of social media accounts. Democracy is discredited by the media going on and on and on about how our elections are unfair. The fact of the matter is our elections are fair. They're very well protected, but they need to be protected much, much more. The states, mm -hmm. I, I'm aware of using at least 12 different uh, computer systems, software programs, to count votes. Well, maybe that's okay, but not in the real world of cyber warfare. It's just too easy to get in there and hack the votes. Right now, we have to concentrate on protecting the votes and, again, Jeez. responding with an offensive doctrine that anybody who tries to do that is going to have their computers blow up on them in the middle of the night. 